Face down. You guys had to make a mistake. You're right. Settle down. Face down. You got down now. All the way down. Let me breathe. Let me breathe. I, got, I have a medical condition. We're going to get air. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That's actually super true. That actually, that might be the sketchiest thing of all. Wait, where are there any? Do I have federal agents in my chat? Can I ask you for your grades on these? Oh, don't be tainted. Oh. Ignore that. ATF agent James Burke went to a home in Columbus, Ohio to retrieve a weapon from an individual who was not permitted to have a firearm. Agent Burke ATF is the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Administration. They do like gun tracing and other weird shit. I don't know what they, they do weird shit. But that's who the ATF is. Burke knocked on the door, but the individual- Oh, actually, let's, we'll just look them up. The most things I know them for is like gun tracing for crimes. <laughs> The Bureau of Alcohol, oh, the Bureau of, sorry. Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. It's a domestic law enforcement bureau. It's also including investigation, prevention of federal offenses involving the unlawful, unlawful use, manufacturing, possession of firearms and explosives, acts of arson and bombings, and illegal trafficking and tax evasion of alcohol and tobacco products. The ATF also regulates the license of the sale, possession, and transportation of firearms, ammunition, and explosives in interstate commerce. Many of the ATF's activities are carried out in conjunction with task forces made up of state and local law enforcement officers, such as the Project Safe Neighborhoods. The ATF operates a unique fire research laboratory in Beltsville, Maryland, where full-scale mock-ups of criminal arson can be reconstructed. Wow. There you go. On July 7th, 2020, ATF agent James Burke went to a home in Columbus, Ohio to retrieve a weapon from an individual who was not permitted to have a firearm. Okay. Agent Burke knocked on the door, but the individual inside the home refused to open it and called 911 instead. Despite the fact that the caller read the dispatcher agent Burke's badge number, officers Joseph Fahey and Kevin Winchell of the Columbus Division of Police were dispatched to investigate the situation as an attempted break-in. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. I'm a federal agent. 917 10 I'm a federal agent. Get on okay, fuck. I don't know what the audit the audit guy is going to say. I'm worried we're going to disagree on everything. Why though? Okay, so let's back up. Since we're so used to seeing the world through the lens of like innocent people that do nothing wrong and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you have just received a, pol a call from a police officer. Okay, you just received a call from the police, from, or I'm sorry, you just received a call as a police officer saying somebody's attempting to break into my house and then who knows what other information was um, provided. So when you show up, you're gonna be treating this situation as like potentially lethal right off the bat. Um, I don't know if drawing the gun this early, especially when you can see the hands is like a little bit of an overreach, but if this, maybe he thinks this guy's armed, I'm not sure. But like, if this is what you're being called to, like all you can really do is, um, all you can really do is like comply with the cops and let them like finish a quick investigation and make sure shit's not going on. This is like almost the equivalent of um this is almost the equivalent of getting swatted, right? Where um where where like if somebody's gonna break into your house and like say or, or somebody's gonna call the cops like, hey, there's like a hostage situation or whatever, cops are gonna come in like really heavy handy or whatever, you know. But yeah. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. 917 10 3. I'm a federal agent. Get on the ground. 10 3. I'm a federal agent. I'm Why wouldn't you agent. show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward, okay. forward. You didn't ask for it. <laughs> didn't ask for <laughs> Get on the ground. We'll figure it out. On that Not getting on the ground. Well, then stay where you're at. I'll stay where I'm at. Fine. Why do you got to make this harder than it is? Listen, I'm not getting. I have no, I have no problem making this. I just want to see if anybody needs some free person to respond as well. You're the one captain. Overreacting. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here. Doesn't no, have ID. No kidding, because she doesn't want to open it. Okay, get on the ground so I can find out who you are. It ain't happening. Okay, fine. Happening. Fine. Although Agent Burke repeatedly states that he is a federal agent, Officer Fahey continues to order him to get on the ground. While the Okay, to be fair, just because you state you're a federal agent doesn't necessarily mean you are, right? If you were trying to break into somebody's house, of course you're going to say you're a federal agent, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, like, no fucking shit, dude. The interplay between the jurisdiction and authority of federal and local law enforcement agencies is complicated. In general, local law enforcement has the authority to issue lawful orders to federal agents when necessary to complete their duties. In the U.S., the authority of state, county, and Wait, local... Wait, hold on. What was that? One second. 
anticipated. Ingestiction and authority of federal and local law enforcement agencies is complicated. In general, local law enforcement has the authority to issue lawful orders to federal agents when necessary to complete their duties. In the U.S., the authority of state, county, and local police departments is established by what is known as territorial jurisdiction. This means that in most situations, a local police officer only- A cop could instruct him to pull out his ID. I, I would be shocked if you were called to a house and you were told that it's a person impersonating a cop trying to break in, I would be shocked if you were inviting that person to reach into a pocket and pull out an ID. I, don't, I think you would probably wanna handle that. You'd probably wanna secure the person first. You'd probably wanna cuff them first. Like, let me just cuff you for a second, tell me where your ID is, I'll check it out. And then after that, you'd like to do the all clear. Like, if you think the person could be like a, a criminal with a gun trying to break in, you're not gonna invite them to reach in and shit. Yeah? has the authority to enforce criminal laws within their own city. But as long as they are within their jurisdiction, they can enforce every type of criminal law. For example, Section 737.11 of the Ohio Revised Code, which would apply to Officer Fihe, states that municipal police officers have the authority to enforce all municipal ordinances, as well as, quote, all criminal laws of the state and the United States. Federal law enforcement agencies, on the other hand, have jurisdiction throughout the United States. But they typically do not have a general grant of authority to enforce all all laws. Rather, federal law enforcement agencies are granted authority by Congress through the United States Code, and most are limited to investigating matters that are within federal jurisdiction. While states have a general police power to pass laws for the welfare of their people, the federal government can only create laws regarding certain subjects that are listed in the Constitution, such as regulating interstate commerce and providing for the punishment of counterfeiting money. These powers are often referred to as the enumerated powers of the federal government. Therefore, both Agent Burke and Officer Fihe were operating within their jurisdiction throughout this incident. But without more information about the underlying situation, it is unclear whether a court would conclude that Officer Fahey's commands constituted lawful orders. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Get on, get on the ground! I'm not getting out of here. I'm not getting out of here. I'm pulling up. I got my eye. Do not reach for your waist! Keep your hands up! Oh my god. Like, if this guy's like a federal agent, I don't know how you, how you don't instantly understand the situation, right? Like, if the cop is called, and even if he's fucking up, even if he thinks, he's some, if he thinks that you're somebody that's trying to break into a house, like, like just, why not just, you do your thing, fucking get on the ground, let him do his fucking two minute thing, and then you're done. And then you walk and you're done. Like, this is like ego v ego, v ego right now. Yeah, like, Jesus. I have an old Kiss your hands up! Yeah. Sir! Get on the ground. Face down on the ground. Face, face down, down now. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if Mad Tips is in chat. Is he? Oh, he's not here. This is one type of police behavior that I have never understood. That I don't see there ever being a rational reason for. Is whenever you have multiple cops on a scene giving commands, I don't know why the fuck that ever happens. I feel like there should be a very clear delineation of responsibility on the scene of any, especially high like tension area, where like you never have like two or three or four or five cops all shouting at like the same perpetrator or victim or whatever you want to call them, I, like or, or suspect or whatever. Um, that, yeah, that is like so brain dead to me. I don't understand. And then everybody is going to get confused and more tense. And like the, even if the guy is trying to act in good faith, we saw this happen with the, um, I was going to say with the Ben Shaver guy, but not even, I think that was just one cop being dumb as fuck, but yeah, I don't know. Face down! You guys make, 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 Face down! Oh, he got down now. All the way down. All the way. All the way. Once Officer Winchell arrives on the scene, Agent Burke decides to comply with the commands of the officers. Why do cops wear these stupid fucking bug sunglasses, too? <laughs> I guess you probably don't want your sun in your eyes when you're trying to shoot somebody. <laughs> and gets on the ground. While attempting to place Agent Burke into handcuffs, Officer Fihe deploys his taser. And after being stunned, Agent Burke surrenders to the officers. Sir, I'm just trying to do my time. Just get in the car! Why would you make us do this? I didn't want you to. I wanted to. Wait. No, you knew oh, what you were doing. Sir, sir, calm down. Relax. Hold sir. It. Hey, guys, please, just talk to me for one second, please. Get in the car. No, we'll wait. talk later. Sir. Wait, wait. You wait. had your chance. Why are you, why are you, like, yeah, I don't, I don't, like, if this guy's a federal agent, like, why the fuck are you arguing? Just, like, get in the car. Like, fucking shit is what it is. Like, it's not like you're going to get in trouble. You're obviously, you're not breaking into a house. You, if you, you work for the ATF, like, just chill. Do what you need to do, show them an idea, and then be on your way. Like, what the fuck, what the fuck are you doing right now? Keep in mind that the real winner, does anybody know the real winner in this situation between the cops and the ATF officer? 
<laughs> the real winner was the woman who the ATF officer shut up to take her gun. And she's just like watching through the fucking window blinds. <laughs> she's like, oh shit, dude. I'm clear. We get to keep the the glitzy. What do you call it? The glizzy? No, I was trying to give you my creds. You no, didn't let me show them to you. never once tried. I did. Get wait, in the car. Wait, wait. wait now. Have a seat. Please. Wait, I gotta breathe. Okay, Please, you can let me breathe. breathe. Oh my God, dude. This guy's so... Hold on. I don't know if they're gonna tase him. I don't know if I can show this. I'm gonna breathe. Let me breathe. I, got, I have a medical condition. We're gonna get air <laughs> Oh my God, dude. I'm sorry. I can't say anything. Okay. Get your no, legs no. in. Get your Sir. legs in. We're closing this door. Sir, get your legs in. I need air. Sir, please call an ambulance. I'm asking for an ambulance. You got a medic coming. Get oh my god, uh, dude, I don't know. Okay. Get in the car. Sir, I don't need the medic. The, the taser didn't bother. You just said call an ambulance. We don't. I, need I, yeah, no, you don't want one. Get in the car. In the car. Get all the way in. I can't I'll go around. breathe. I'll go around. Wait, sir. This channel cuts out the violence. Oh. Yeah, if you got that one, cars close, keep them. The officers attempt to place Agent Burke into their patrol vehicle, but he verbally and physically resists, prompting the officers to force him into the back of the cruiser. Please, sir. I if you are a real police officer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was trying to give you my credit. Okay, to be fair, though, the, 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 uh, the arresting officer, whatever, this guy is also a little bit fucking high strung, okay? Jesus Christ, all right? But also, the guy being arrested is, is stupid, too. Like, what, what, dude, what is up with the police and federal officers in this fucking country? Holy shit. It's like, a, I'm watching, like, a... It's like somebody took, like, an Oblivion engine and turned the AI up to, like, ultra aggro on, like, all the parties, and they're just, like, screaming random shit at each other. We got him in the car. He might even be a real cop, but he wouldn't tell us, wouldn't, wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't get on the ground. I mean, what the guy? the cruiser will go ahead and clear. You bet. I don't believe they're looking for anybody else. How much time do you have to train for to be police? In the U.S., isn't it like a fucking 12-week program or some shit? I think in Sweden, you have to go to school for four or five years to do it. But I'm pretty sure in the U.S., I feel like it's like a four, it's like a three or four-month program, isn't it? I, I might be wrong on that. I, I, I. Actually, let's look that up because I hear that repeated. That might not be true. How long training to become a police officer? California is probably going to be like the most, would be my guess. The duration of the training in the police academy varies for different agencies. It usually takes about 13 to 19 weeks on average, but can last up to six months. Okay, all right, whatever. We had to taser him, so we got a medic coming. Yeah, we can yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we thought, but then he wouldn't get in the car. Trying to get in on his house. If he is an actual police officer, he ought to be ashamed of himself. Sir, I'm not ashamed. I'm trying to... You're not. You're right. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> no, you screwed up. You bet. <laughs> what is happening here? First Holy thing he should have had his badge is that when I got here. Wouldn't get on the ground, wouldn't comply with anything. Whoever, whenever the sergeant gets here, we'll call his supervisor. <laughs> yep, at this point. He's, Dude, still, you saw how he's still shouting from the car. What is happening? He was, he wouldn't, he wouldn't comply. No, you never, no. It's all on video. Don't even argue with him, just, just let him yell. Yeah, we had to use the taser, just a drive stun. Okay. But he's got a medic, he says he's got some condition. He may even really be a police officer. He's got a badge, but he wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't get on the ground. I told him over and over to get on the ground. He wouldn't okay. comply with anything. We had to tase him. Right. He fought with us the whole time. Wouldn't get in the car. If he is a real you police officer. No, we're not. Okay. Okay. No, I do gotta, yeah. All right. Yeah. So his supervisor is gonna need to come to see him after the way he acted. Bro, this guy's on a Sigma grind set, okay? Be a cop. Get arrested by cops, sit in a cop car, be on the clock the entire time. If that's not Sigma shit, okay? I don't know what the fuck is. Look at him, dude. He's just chilling back there. He's here to work a war by himself. There's something strange about that, too. That actually is true. Oh, that's actually super true. That actually, that might be the sketchiest thing of all. Wait, where are there any? Do I have federal agents in my chat? You're, you're sent to a house to retrieve a firearm from somebody that's not supposed to have one. If you were a police officer, I don't think you're ever running that solo. But do federal agents do like solo pickups like that? 
That that actually might be the sketchiest thing of all. If you showed up and there are like two, there are like two people at the door. It's like, but if there's one guy. You're an officer. What are you here for to get a gun? That yeah, in plain clothes. Like that's probably actually the weirdest thing in the world to to that makes this thing like so strange. I watch these channels a lot. Supposedly you call local sheriff slash cops to assist you from what I've seen. <clears throat> Is that though, aren't federal agents commonly single for low risk warrant? I don't know if it's low risk or not. All I know, the only piece of information I know is he was sent to a house to retrieve a firearm from somebody that's not supposed to have one. So if they're not supposed to have a firearm, I mean, what is this? They've been convicted for a felony. Um, they've been convicted for what, domestic violence? Um, might have a restraining order that might prohibit firearm use. I'm not sure, like what, like, it's, not, it's like, I don't know. That, that seems really weird that, that you would run that alone but maybe for federal agents maybe it is i'm not sure even when even when i've had the fbi come to my house to ask me questions even for fbi it's always two people there's always two people that show up but uh, yeah, i don't know that's super weird something about they got info her wife her husband bought a shotgun or something he was here to follow up on some shotgun purchase yeah i don't know if he's an fda or CBA, i don't know who knows here, the Columbus officers remark that Agent Burke was allegedly at the location to follow up on the purchase of a shotgun. Oh, okay, hold on. So Tim in chat says, this happens all the time. For example, when you file for a firearm stamp or such and get rejected, then the ATF may come to pick up the firearm you try to get a stamp for. Okay, that might be it. Which is a common task for an ATF agent. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, known as the ATF, for short, is a law enforcement agency within the Department of Justice that, according to Section 599A of Title 28 of the U.S. Code, is responsible for investigating, quote, criminal and regulatory violations of the federal firearms, explosives, arson, alcohol, and tobacco smuggling laws. Under Section 3051 of Title 18 of the U.S. Code, ATF agents have the authority to, quote, make seizures of property subject to forfeiture to the United States, which, according to Section 924 of Title 18 of the U.S. Code, includes illegally possessed possessed firearms. In fact, as the Wall Street Journal reported in 2019, ATF agents are regularly involved in retrieving weapons from individuals who were sold firearms when they should have not been permitted to purchase one due to their background check. These delayed denials occur when, because of backlogs in the federal background check system, individuals are sold firearms before their background check is completed, as the sale is legally permitted to proceed after three business days, even if the check is not finished. If the FBI, which performs the background checks, determines that an individual should not have been sold a firearm once the check is completed, the delayed denial is referred to the ATF to track down and seize the weapon. In 2017 alone, the ATF was responsible for handling about 6,000 of these seizures, and a delayed denial is only one of the reasons that an ATF agent can confiscate weapons. While it is uncertain whether Agent Burke was pursuing a delayed denial or was following up on another firearm issue, it is clear that Agent Burke was performing a routine duty in his role as an ATF special agent. I know are you guys the ones that originally called? Yeah, yes. Okay. What What did he say to you when he was talking to you? I have to open the door because he's a police. I tell him I can't open the door because my husband... Our officers on the edge, bro. We were finally and, able to uh, get the He said, you have to open the door. the door. I tell him, I'm well, sorry, I can't. Um, stay with my kids. My kids start to crying to because they, they are afraid. And okay. I tell him... You did he ever to try to... Place. Did he ever try and break the door or anything like that? Yes, he is still knock and he said, I will stay here until evening if you don't open okay. the door because you okay. are li liar. Okay, very good. There's a chance the sergeant might want to talk to you, so thank you very much. Okay, good. Thanks, Steve. Grade the cop slash agent and see how your grade compares to the video grade at the end. Um, I mean, like, the cops that showed up, they were being called theoretically high risk, but it feels like they were way too on edge. Like, especially the second guy that showed up and started screaming. So, like, I don't know. The cops that showed up, it feels like they could have been more chill. I'll give them a C, I guess. I'll give them a C. I'm not, I'm not impressed with how they showed up and handled things. Um, for the ATF officer, um, I'm, I give him an F. Anytime it's, so the way that I look at this, um, and get mad if you want, anytime you are refusing orders, lawful orders from an officer, you're, I'm almost always going to say you're in the wrong. Even if the officer doesn't have a good reason to ask it, like you're just, especially you should know better as a federal agent. Like you're just asking for shit to get escalated to such an unimaginable level. Why would you do that? If somebody's telling you like, Hey, I'm a cop, get the fuck down. I'm just like, all right, yeah, fuck it. I'll get down. Right. I think it's bullshit, but like, I'm not going to argue with you. And as a federal agent, you should know better. Uh, yeah. So I give the ATF guy an F, but that's, that's where we're at. The cops that showed up on the scene, I'll give him a C. Maybe a C minus for being so hot headed and intense right off the bat. Um, but the, um, 
Uh, the ATF guy is, yeah, gets a big fat F. Check your YouTube thing. Oh, shit. Hold on, chill. I changed it. There you go. The complainant essentially admits to the Columbus officers that she refused to open the door for Agent Burke despite the fact that she was informed that he was a federal officer. In general, citizens are under no obligation to open their doors to members of law enforcement without a warrant, and this remains true in this situation. Although Agent Burke was at the home to retrieve a shotgun from a citizen who was not legally allowed to own a firearm, it is likely that a court would conclude that the citizen did not have to open the door or surrender the firearm if Agent Burke did not have a warrant. In the 1958 case of Jones versus United States, the Supreme Court explained that, quote, it is settled doctrine that probable cause for belief that certain articles subject to seizure are in a dwelling cannot of itself justify a search without a warrant. Were federal officers free to search without a warrant merely upon probable cause to believe that certain articles were within a home, the provisions of the Fourth Amendment would become empty phrases, and the protection it affords largely nullified. Similarly, in the 1980 case of Peyton versus New York, the Supreme Court stated that, quote, it is a basic principle of Fourth Amendment law that searches and seizures inside a home without a warrant are presumptively unreasonable. So we can't tell. The woman could be super manipulative or crazy, but she appears, she appears to be relatively sane and sober at the door. That's the appearance that she gives, which makes me wonder, what was this ATF agent doing at the door that actually prompted her to call the local police? Um, I'm super curious about that. It seems, now this is all conjecture, it seems unlikely to me that the ATF agent just knocked and said, hello, I'm here to retrieve a firearm. It's, it's, I, I don't know if there was like a fight at the door where he was like, I'm coming in no matter what the fuck, or like he was like pounding or some shit and she felt the need to call 911. Um, I, I'm really curious about that. Um, I, I, but I don't know, maybe, maybe she did just call the police to get him thrown out or some shit, like, yeah, I'm not sure absent exigent circumstances, a warrantless entry to search for weapons or contraband is unconstitutional, even when a felony has been committed and there is probable cause to believe that incriminating evidence will be found within. While it is certainly possible that in some situations, exigent circumstances to enter a home and seize an illegal firearm without a warrant. Banging on the door repeatedly and saying he wouldn't be leaving, he'll wait till her husband gets there, that's what she said. Yeah, but like, that doesn't say anything to me, right? Because it could literally be like, like bang, I'm gonna wait here, your goddamn fucking husband gets home, right? It could be that, or it could be like, you know, now I'm talking about, you're not gonna let me in, you're like, okay, I'm gonna wait out here until your husband gets back, right? I'll be back, I'm gonna have a cigarette, right? Like those two situations, it could be the same thing, but they're totally different, right? That's what I'm saying, right? It could, they, that, those could be, those two things could be totally different in how they play out, you know? Or it may exist, there did not appear to be any such emergency in this situation. Assuming that Agent Burke was not executing a warrant, the complainant was most likely within her rights to refuse to answer the door for Agent Burke. Mm -hmm. What's he got? Body Hey, there's a chance he may even be a legitimate. Who knows? So, but she said that he grabbed the handle and tried yeah. to push it open. Yeah, they said it. We put it out as an eight that he's trying to break in. Well, no, That's why I thought he's working a 58 by channel. himself. Yeah, yeah. After holding Agent Burke for about an hour, the officers released him without charges. On December 4th, 2020, Agent Burke filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Columbus, Officer Fihey, and Officer Winchell, alleging that, among other violations, Officers Fihey and Winchell used excessive force during the incident. According to the complaint, Agent Burke was transferred to an administrative support role within ATF after the incident because of the injuries he suffered. As of the date of this episode, the lawsuit is still pending. Overall, Agent Burke gets a C minus. Oh, shit! He was likely acting i wrote it no no wait which one is agent burke is that agent burke in his lawful authority when the columbus officers arrived on the scene he refused to obey what were likely lawful orders from the oh officer. no never mind i gave that guy an f this never mind we're we're probably gonna have our grades switched fuck officers physically and verbally resisted the officers and maintained an unprofessional and condescending demeanor throughout the encounter. While it is clear from the video footage that Agent Burke informed the Columbus officers that he was a federal agent on multiple occasions, that statement alone does not override the officer's authority. Yeah, wait, that statement alone, to be clear, that statement alone is meaningless. Who the fuck cares? Bro, I'm a fed, I promise. Chill, man. I'm chill. Bro, I'm a fed. Like, who cares? Yeah? <laughs> to order him to the ground until they can secure the scene. Agent Burke was armed at the time of the encounter, and it could certainly be argued that the Columbus officers just wanted to disarm him in case he was, in fact, 
pretending to be a federal agent. If Agent Burke had politely complied with the orders of the officers, instead of blatantly refusing to get on the ground, then this interaction may have had a much different outcome. True. All that said, there is no denying that at least some degree of negligence took place from the Columbus officers' conduct. But Agent Burke may have had a much stronger case against them if he had been more willing to cooperate with their commands. I commend the agent for following up this interaction with the proper legal actions, but I would caution him to consider the notion that federal law enforcement authorities does not trump state law enforcement authority in future encounters. The Columbus officers get an F for approaching Damn. the scene with their weapons drawn despite no immediate threat being present, neglecting to consider the facts of the encounter in an effort to gain control of the situation, and for failing to conduct a legitimate investigation into Agent Burke's identity before deciding to place him under arrest. Although the legality of the Columbus officers- Wait, hold on. Oh my God, I disagree with so much of this. Fuck, hold on, wait a second. W where is Pisco? The police officers didn't actually arrest him, did they? I thought that it wouldn't that have just been a detainment while they performed an investigation to verify his identity and then he was released? I, I don't did they actually would, would you consider this? What is the di I didn't see the video. Oh fuck. I don't know if this would be considered like an arrest or if this would be considered like what is it, what is the difference between like an arrest and a detainment? Like somebody you're you're so I'll just I'll tell you basically what happened, right? So these guys get a call that somebody is impersonating a federal officer trying to break into a house. So they show up at the scene of the crime. Yeah, what's your question? Okay. Wait, wait, am I watching? No, I'm just, I'll tell you, we're gonna watch. Okay, okay. so these, so police officers get a call that there's a suspicious man that is impersonating a federal officer trying to break into a house, okay? Mm -hmm. Lady calls with her kids, she says this. So officers show up to the scene, um, basically guns drawn, if not immediately, then almost immediately. When they see the guy at the door, um, they shout at him for a while to get down, they have a verbal scuffle or whatever, and then eventually they um, they get him to the ground, they handcuff him, and then they put him in the back of the car um, while they call for backup. Backup comes, they perform an investigation, they go through his ID or whatever, they, they get witness statements from the lady or whatever, and then after holding him for about an hour they let him go is this considered an arrest or, or a detainment so first of all i i just passed the bar but i don't know if i can call myself a lawyer just yet okay uh, so i just want to say this is oh, not hey congratulations by the way Thank oh you. i guess Mark, people really want me to say this during the um altercation they tased him as well but good okay um that actually might be relevant for um determining whether or not it's arrest okay um i will say for constitutional purposes um a seizure probably occurred um, so there are things known as Terry stops, um, where essentially you're being quote detained and for constitutional purposes, uh, if you've heard of stop and frisk, so that policy constitutionally is referred to as a seizure. Now the distinction between uh, an arrest and like a detainment or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, typically has to do with like, um, whether or not you were brought to another station whether or not it's for an absurd amount of, like a long amount of time. And um, so those distinctions, the more it starts to look like you're being placed someplace different, you're being detained for a long period of time. Sure. Um, if you're ever brought to booking or something, of correct. course, I would consider that an arrest, absolutely. Right. And but so if, you're, like, if you're like held at the scene while they perform an investigation to verify something you said, you haven't been formally charged with a crime or they don't even really have like, probable yeah. cause to suspect you of a crime. It seems weird the to call that an arrest. The standard is lower, right? So the standard yeah. there for a, a Terry stop or attainment uh, typically is reasonable suspicion. And that's a lower threshold of evidence that um, than probable cause. And that, that difference in threshold actually matters sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you are stopping someone for questioning, you don't have probable cause they committed a crime or anything. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, uh, you know, remove them from their situation and, and detain them for a long period of time and yeah. do everything else that's entitled to the full arrest. Also, but, um, to be clear, yeah. for a Terry stop, reasonable suspicion can be as much as you match a description, a somewhat accurate description, like given like a call to the police, right? It's, it's a lower standard. So there actually is case law mm -hmm. on like, can it be an anon just an anonymous tip uh, sufficient for, for a Terry stop? And um, I, I'm not read up on the latest uh, about what is sufficient for reasonable suspicion. It certainly is less than probable cause. It can mm -hmm. be something like, um, you know, maybe furtive movements plus something else. Sure. Or maybe like uh, there's some articulable reason that points to a particular person um, that, that gives you a reason to stop them. So mm -hmm. if it, it can't just be like, well, he was in a crowd of a bunch of people uh, and it's kind of a unambiguous, undisambiguated kind of situation. It has to be kind of articulable 
suspicions towards a particular person kind of deal. It is like not the most clear kind of thing all the time, and there are edge cases. But if there's like someone who's saying, if, if you have a witness who's not anonymous saying, I think this person has a gun, mm -hmm. I think typically that would be like. You're um, easily at the level like, of like yeah, performing would, a Terry stop and a detainment, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, especially because that has a lot of indicia of credibility mm -hmm. for, um, and, and it's, you know, particularized an individual. That's, I, I would say in most cases, that's going to be okay under federal constitutional law. Now, keep in mind, a lot of states have their own thresholds that they have that you have to follow. So mm -hmm. in the state of New York, you have to have basis for even approaching someone, um, which is it's a lower thing than, than reasonable suspicion. So th there's other law that you might have to deal with other than federal constitutional law, although that's kind of like the main thing that we're dealing with in these in these situations. Gotcha. Do you think in this yeah. case, then, based on what I told you, does this sound like an arrest or a detainment? A tasing of someone and holding them for an hour mm -hmm. in a police car. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, I think there's a strong argument that that's that's like an arrest. Like you've you've physically restrained them with a taser. You've held them for over an hour. Um, why does so? Why does the use of force matter here? Because because I think that that has indicia of um, of like a full formal arrest. I, I would say. Well, so like so say. here so here's a question because theoretically every single detainment is going to be done up to lethal force. Right? You agree with that, right? Uh, in principle, yeah. Yeah. So. Are you telling me that something that could be a detainment, if you resist enough, it will just turn into an arrest as a result of that? For constitutional purposes, I'm not sure. I, listen, I'm not, it's not sure. Uh, well, because, uh, because like, if, let's say that I give you this exact same thing, except they don't tase them, they just bring them in. Does that now, instead of an arrest, now it turns into a detainment? It seems weird that it would depend the on... The hour, I think the hour is kind of like um, looming large in my head. Although, I think that there have been Terry stops that have been more than an hour. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the kind of a totality of circumstances test. I think it's from what you've told me. Um, I don't know what, what's the significance of whether or not it's arrest versus a a Terry stop. Uh, oh, I just I don't, when or, he said he gave so the verbiage that this guy used in the video was he was upset because the cops. I think he said something like the cops arrested him for no reason. But I didn't think he. It didn't come off to me like they arrested him for no reason. It seemed like reasonable that they detained a man that was reported for impersonating a federal officer trying to break in who was resisting lawful orders. So they detained him for an hour. They verified his identity and then they let him leave. So well, that, I don't, I don't yeah. know if, if if he's resisting, then I, wouldn't you have probable cause to arrest him for resisting arrest? Um, or, or yeah, but I don't I, think I he was. I don't think he was ever. Like, no, no, that sorry. that is true. But I don't think he was charged with resisting arrest or anything like that, right? Okay. Well, who cares if they're charged or not? I uh -huh. mean, just because you know the whatever attorney doesn't decide to press charges or doesn't uh, decide to you know criminally prosecute them, that's kind of not what we're analyzing. What's what's the significance of this in general? I guess like is there a civil case going on or something? Um, I don't know. I think so. I think he filed civil charges or he, he went through some federal legal pro or it might be a federal case even i don't i don't remember but he, he, fi he filed some kind of charges against the police department yeah so what are you upset about or i'm not wondering? upset damn i'm just watching oh. a fucking video okay um <laughs> no i was just curious in terms of like what would count as the difference yeah. between like an arrest versus like a detainment or whatever i, um, I can I'm sure i'm give, bastardizing that give me give me like 10 seconds let me just listen to his verbiage again and i'll see what hold on their weapons drawn despite no immediate threat being present, neglecting to consider the facts of the encounter in an effort to gain control of the situation, and for failing to conduct a legitimate investigation into Agent Burke's identity before deciding to place him under arrest. Although the legality of the Columbus... Oh, so they said for failing to conduct a legitimate investigation of his identity before placing him under arrest. But it seemed like mm -hmm. arresting him, or at least detaining him, was like a pretty necessary part of performing that investigation, since he wouldn't comply with the officer's commands to get down on the ground when they showed up at the door. But... Oh, uh, and so they graded him poorly because they didn't ask for his name? Well, I, I guess that, um... Fuck, do you want to just watch the interaction? Yeah, yeah, I was still. <laughs> okay. How do I watch it? Do I just watch it lagging? Um, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I'm just going to go to 130. We're going to 2x this bitch, right? Okay, but did you did you send it to me? Or... Oh, my I'm, God. I'm just watching your stream. Just fucking... yeah. You just watch my stream. Do you want me to send it to you? I can send it to you. Yeah, send it, send it to me. Okay, motherfucker. <laughs> hey. Or actually, fuck it. Just put it on 1x. I have 25 minutes. No, no, put it on 1.5, okay? And then we'll just, we'll 1. talk 5. through this together. We'll go through together, okay? Ready? All right. Wait, wait, 1.5 at, at 20 minutes? No, no, I'm at 1 minute and 30 seconds. 1 minute and 30 seconds. Yeah. All right. At 1.5 1. 1. times speed. One second. I'll tell you when. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Three, uh, two, one, go.
20. ATF agent James Burke went to a home in Columbus, Ohio to retrieve a weapon from an individual who was not permitted to have a firearm. Agent Burke knocked on the door, but the individual inside the home refused to open it and called 911 instead. Despite the fact that the caller read the dispatcher agent Burke's badge number, officers Joseph Fahey and Kevin Winchell of the Columbus Division of Police were dispatched to investigate the situation as an attempted break-in. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. 917 10 I'm a federal agent. Get on the ground! I'm a federal agent. I'm Why wouldn't you show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward, Lord. He didn't ask for it. He didn't ask for it. Get on the ground. We'll figure it out. On that chain. Not getting on the ground. Well, then stay where you're at. I'll stay where I'm at. Fine. Why do you got to make this harder than it is? Listen, I'm not getting on the I have no problem making this. You're the one overreacting. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here, doesn't have ID. No kidding, because she doesn't want to open it. Okay, get on the ground so I can find out who you are. It ain't happening. Okay, fine, fine. Although Agent Burke repeatedly states that he is a federal agent, Officer Fahey continues to order him to get on the ground. While the interplay between the jurisdiction and Okay, stop right here. I don't care about this. Yep. Okay, so I feel like that commentary is really silly. So if you get a call that somebody is impersonating a federal agent and trying to break into your house, and then you show up on the scene of the crime and the guy's like, I'm a fed, don't shoot. I mean, like, if he is impersonating a federal agent, he's obviously going to say that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I would totally agree with that. Yeah, it seems like now. at this point, whether the um, whether the cops are in the right or the wrong or, or whether whatever, it see, my, my, my view on dealing with police is that, like, if you're being given orders, even if you think they're in the wrong, you have to comply unless you feel like your life is at risk or something. And that, like like refusal or failure to comply there's just no excuse for it especially if you're another federal agent like why why would you ever do that it just seems total i mean they're there to investigate i would hope that the, the, the cops would communicate that they're there to investigate an impersonator which he said um, he said we're here to investigate a break-in yeah the cop I'm, said we're here we were called here to investigate a potential break-in maybe a federal impersonator i don't know if he said that, but he said potential break-in at least yeah okay yeah i i think that just like regular people should comply with orders of, of, of the cops um especially in those circumstances where we have i think that you showed a video before where there was like actually people impersonating of the police that oh like the two people at the front door where they were yeah, trying to say yeah and there was like a video from whatever the the hardware is that gives you the, the doorbell mm -hmm. video whatever mm -hmm. um so i i think i would tend to agree with you that you need to be able to verify who you are that's why they have badges and that's why yeah. i mean Okay. All right. Yeah. We're going to keep, I'm at 305. Um, we don't need to listen to like all the case law bullshit okay. or whatever. Go. Such as regulating interstate commerce and providing for the punishment of counterfeiting money. Oh, These powers are often referred law. to as the enumerated powers of the federal government. Therefore, both Agent Burke and Officer Fahey were operating within their jurisdiction throughout this incident. But without more information about the underlying situation, it is unclear whether a court would conclude that Officer Fahey's commands constituted lawful orders. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Get on, get on the ground. I'm not getting out of the ground. I'm not going to... I got my ID. Do not reach for your waist. Keep your hands up. Dude, why would I have an old waist? Keep your hands up. Go. Go. Get on the ground. Face down. On the ground. Face down. Face down. Now. Face down. You guys got to make a mistake. Face down. Now. All the way down. All the way. Once Officer Winchell arrives on the scene, Agent Burke decides to comply with the commands of the officers and gets on the ground. While attempting to place Agent Burke into handcuffs, Officer Fahey deploys his taser, and after being stunned, Agent Burke surrenders to the officers. Sir, I'm just trying to get my Just get in the car. Why would you make us do this? I didn't want you to. I wanted to. Wait. No, you knew what you were doing. Sir, sir, calm down. Relax. Hold sir. Hey, guys, please, just talk to me for one second, please. Get in the car. No, we'll wait. talk later. Sir, wait, wait. You wait. had your chance. No, I was trying to give you my credge. You no, didn't let me show it to you. Never once tried. I did. Get wait, in the car. Wait, wait. wait. Now. Have a seat. Please. Wait, I gotta breathe. Okay, please, sir, let me breathe. Sit down and breathe. Let me breathe. I, got, I have a medical condition. We're gonna get air to you. Get no, your legs in. Get your legs in. We're closing this door. Sir, get your legs in. I need air. Sir, please call an ambulance. I'm asking for an ambulance. You got a medic coming. Get in the car. Sir, I don't need a medic. The taser didn't behind me. You just said call the ambulance. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Yeah, if you got double cars close, keep the officers attempt to place Agent Burke into their patrol vehicle, but he verbally and physically resists, prompting the officers to force him into the back of the cruiser. Please, sir. If you are a real police officer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was trying to give you my credit. We got him in the car. He might even be a real cop, but he wouldn't tell us. Wouldn't, wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't get on the ground. I mean, what the heck? The cruiser. We'll go ahead and clear. You bet. We had a taser, and we got a medic coming. Well, that's what we thought, but then he wouldn't get in the car. If he is an actual police officer, he got to be ashamed of himself. You're not. You're right. You're not. Yeah. No, you screwed up. You bet. Oh, and he is a vet, isn't he? First thing he should have had his badges out when I got here. Wouldn't get on the ground. Wouldn't comply with anything. Whoever, whenever the sergeant gets here, we'll call his supervisor. No, 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 yep, no, no. at this point. Dude, you saw how he was. He wouldn't, he wouldn't lie. No, you never, no. It's all on video. Don't even argue with this. Just let him yell. Yeah, we had to use the taser just to drive, son. Okay. 
but he's got a medic. He says he's got some condition. He may even really be a police officer. He's got a badge, but he wouldn't do anything. He wouldn't get on the ground. I told him over and over to get on the ground. He wouldn't okay. comply with anything. We had to tase him. Right. He fought with us the whole time. Wouldn't get in the car. If he is a real police officer. No, we're not. Okay. Okay. Glad you got him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So his supervisor is going to need to come to see him. That's the way he acted. It's all in video. Ideas. He's got a good look. He's not a good look. He very, very, very well, well may be. Hey, but you know what? When a Columbus police officer, yeah. You're good. You're good. Don't worry about it. I know. I know. He remarked it. He said over and over, "I'm not getting on the ground. I will not." I'm like, okay. That's not how this works. I said, "You know, you obviously don't know what's going on then. If he's here to work a war by himself, there's something strange about that too." Something about the guy who brought her wife. Her husband bought a shotgun or something. He was here to follow up on some shotgun purchase. Yeah. Who knows? Here, the Columbus officers remarked that Agent Burke was allegedly at the location to follow up on the purchase of a shotgun, which is a common task for an ATF agent. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, known as the ATF for short, is a law enforcement agency within the Department of Justice that, according to Section 599A of Title 28. Okay, we can pause for a second. Um, yeah. Okay, we don't need all this. Um, so basically, he's in the car now. Um, while they're, they either call a supervisor or they're trying to verify his identity. I think they, they might search the car, um, or they're just going through the badge or whatever on the ground. I think to verify mm -hmm. the federal credentials. Um, I'm at ten ten right now. Okay, one second. You're at one point five speed, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Three, two, two, one, one. go. Agent Burke was pursuing a delayed denial or was following up on another firearm issue. It is clear that Agent Burke was performing a routine duty in his role as an ATF special agent. Are you guys the ones that originally called? Yeah, yes. Okay. What, what did he say to you when he was talking to you? I have to open the door because he's a police. I tell him I can't open the door because my husband. Our officers on the answer, but we were finally able to. Uh, he said, You have to open the door. I tell him, I'm sorry, I can't um, stay with my kids. My kids start to cry because they're they afraid. Okay. No. Did he ever try to, did he ever try to break the door or anything like that? Yes, he still knocked and he said, I will stay here until evening if you don't open okay. the door because okay. you are layer. Okay, very good. There's I'm going to pause for one outside. moment, okay? Yeah. Ten. So... Now I'm I'm I'll, I'm being honest. I'm making a lot of assumptions here that this lady's not like crazy, manipulative, or whatever, because she could be, right? But assuming yeah. everything she's saying is is like relatively truthful, and she looks to be pretty like sane, pretty sober, pretty in control. Her kids don't seem like insane, right? Sounds like an okay police call. If if her husband's not home, some cultures, you know, she doesn't want to open the door for somebody like this, um, and he's like banging the door, saying, "I'm gonna stay here until he comes" or whatever. Like I can, I think that the call is probably okay, especially if he doesn't have a warrant or anything. He can't force. He doesn't entry. have a warrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that I would probably open the door and talk to them, but mm -hmm. um, I don't have a problem with them not opening the door if, they, if there's no warrant. Mm -hmm. um, sure, especially a small woman. It was a big guy. I don't know if you saw. It. Like, I, I'm, so I'm sympathetic to the police call. Um, okay, so I'm at 10:54. You ready to go? Yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay, three, two, one, go. So thank you very I'm much. Here. Okay, thank good, thanks, Steve. The complainant essentially admits to the Columbus officers that she refused to open the door for Agent Burke, despite the fact that she was informed that he was a federal officer. In general, yeah, citizens are under no obligation to open their doors to members of law enforcement yeah, without a warrant. This yeah, okay, true. and then stop her. And then again, like, he keeps bringing that up, but like, I mean, <laughs> like, I admitted that I didn't open the door when he said he was a fed. Like, well, sure, but I mean, like, it sounds like it's because she wants her husband home. And also, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know the situation of these people, what their lives are like. Like, there might be, yeah, who cares if somebody says it? Yeah. I'm at a 1225. Go to be any such emergency in this situation. Assuming that Agent Burke was not executing a warrant, the complainant was most likely within her rights to refuse to answer the door for Agent Burke. Yeah, I agree with that. What's he got? Hey, there's a chance he may even be a legitimate. No. She said he grabbed the handle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they said we put it out as an eight that he's trying to break in. That's why I thought he was working the 58 by himself. Yeah, yeah. After holding Agent Burke for about an hour, the officers released him without charges. On December 4th, 2020, Agent Burke filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Columbus, mm -hmm. Officer Fihe, and Officer Winchell, alleging that, among other violations, Officers Fihe and Winchell Qualified used excessive immunity. force during the incident. According to the complaint, Agent Burke was transferred to an administrative support. Oh, yeah, so they might not be able to sue, but they might be able to file a complaint or something. Uh, uh, I guess I'm still saying. Oh, I'll, shit. I paused I'll, it. Sorry. I paused it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why. So there's a would qualify would state qualified immunity be like preempted by federal law or something like that? I'm, I'm wondering. So there's a the supremacy clause of the Constitution makes it so that like federal law trumps state law. I'm wondering if you can use qualified immunity to protect yourself um, from lawsuits from like federal actors in their official capacity. But I guess he's suing in his individual capacity. Well, I think um, the, so Matt Tips is in chat, he's a police tutor. And this sounds right. I think that qualified immunity just means that as an individual, you can't be sued, right? But the agency correct. still can, right? But, oh, weren't they suing the, the cops or were they suing the agency? Um, I think it was a complaint against the Columbus Police Department is what I think it was. Huh. Okay. Um, that's interesting. And what's the, what's the complaint say? What's the substance? Do we know? I think it was like on, uh, on, uh, undue force or something what do you call it or obsessive not obsessive excessive force excessive yeah excessive force whatever yeah 
Um, well, like a, a Section 1983 claim that they violated the, the the federal officers like civil rights or something? Maybe I, something I'm like that. I'm curious re- reading the, the complaint, but sorry. Well, we can go back to, um, if you want, go to 13 minutes and put it at times one and we can just listen for the exact complaint, okay? Okay. Three, two. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, sorry. Okay. okay. Okay, 13, three, two, one released him without charges. On December 4th, 2020, Agent Burke filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Columbus, Officer Fihey, oh, and yeah, Officer no. Winchell, yeah, alleging that, officers. among other violations, oh, okay. Officers Fihey and Winchell used excessive force. Oh, wait, hold on, wait, wait, stop, pause for a sec. Yeah. But, okay, sorry, I, fuck, I didn't listen to start. But it's, he's filing a complaint, not like a civil case, right? These are different things, or? No, it is a civil case, a complaint. Oh. Typically, like a civil complaint would be like a lawsuit. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm at so 13, like, or, what were we saying? 13, 14. Okay, three. Two, one, go. According to the complaint, Agent Burke was transferred to an administrative support role within ATF after the incident because of the injuries he suffered. As of the date of this episode, the lawsuit is still pending. Overall, Agent Burke gets a C minus because oh, although shit, he was fuck. Oh, I was gonna ask you for your grades on these. Oh, don't be tainted. Oh. Ignore that. I, I'm curious. So if you have to yeah. grade on an A plus to F scale, the federal agent and then the police officers, what would you what would you grade each of them? Starting with the um, I guess with the federal agent. F's, both both F's. I think. Um, oh, I think the. I I really I always have like a defense oriented mind, mm-hmm. and so, you know, sometimes I feel weird about officers going to to house without warrants just to try to like, get consent to like do searches and all that kind of stuff from from people. Mm-hmm. And plus, from like a practical perspective, the federal officer wasn't was being kind of silly and just not listening and um, complying. I, I don't think that I think the state officers are like exaggerating the extent to which he didn't comply Mm -hmm. with their orders um but he didn't comply in in some substantive ways like getting on the ground after multiple times of being told and that just seems really stupid um and led to his his tasing Mm -hmm. um the other the state cops were absolutely nuts to treat him the way they they did after they had arrested him and like shoving him in the in the door i mean that just seemed totally unnecessary after they had had him under control mm-hmm. um it sounds like they were way too she aggro did. initially yeah. um and so i would give it probably f's to both okay i i absolutely gave an f to the federal officer because i don't know why you're non-compliant at the door i don't know what you ever expect to happen at that point other than somebody's either going to die or you're going to get you know fucked up um, I, I, yeah it makes no sense to me yeah i get i gave the police officers a c minus because uh ob- the attitude was fucking horrible they seemed both like really 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 hot um i don't think they technically did anything completely legal and i could be empathetic in some situations where like if you're getting a call for a suspected break-in and you're like it's kind of like it's like the equivalent of, like swatting somebody like cops show up and yeah. they're really hot-headed because they've heard some crazy shit but i think they probably could have been a bit more chilled out handling the um uh ha- handling the yeah. situation for sure Here, oh here's a question that i have for you yeah. i have never understood this I feel like there is never a, oh, and Mad Tips is here now, so I can ask this question as well. I feel like there is never a good reason for police officers on the scene to have more than one person giving instructions. I don't know why the fuck that is the th- a case or the thing ever, why? The thing we were thinking about is like multiple times that where it's been caught on, on camera that uh-huh. there's conflicting equal and opposite directions, like either get on the ground or stay where you are, stuff like that. Um, uh-huh. I hear you, yeah. It's, it's, if it's impossible to comply with both sets of orders. Especially when like really. the natural like conflicting information is gonna lead the person to accidentally. So for instance, I got nervous in this video when the second cop showed up on the other side and started screaming at him. Like I could totally see myself like you turn around and like you drop your hands cause you're not thinking cause it's like, holy shit. And then you just like, you get shot and it's fucked up. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, it feels like a really reckless, stupid, horrible fucking thing. Um, yeah. I, do you know, I mean, do you have a, you sound, sound like you might have a cop in the chat. Mad tip. Is there yeah. a reason for that? Is that? So he says, my talk? agency's policy forbids multiple officers from giving commands at once. You'll well, get in trouble go. if you do it. Okay, I don't know. I mean, th- that to me makes total sense that you should have one person that's kind of the go, mm-hmm. the go person. I remember there's there's a video of like, I don't know if you've ever seen it, some sovereign citizen or some second amendment person walking into a police Oh God, yeah. Uh, like with like armed to yep. the teeth. Yeah, there's two and, of them. One guy with a video camera, and one yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they're, like there's the num- the amount of orders that are being. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the kind of different situation because they're yeah. Get down to the ground. Put your let me see your hands. Give yeah. me put turn around. Like, yeah, and it's like holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like not a planned event as opposed to this where 
you would hope that they, they'd be like at least a, a word said, all right, I'm in charge, I'm, I'm taking lead or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear that. In terms of what actually interested me more is the, is the legal question about whether or not he's, quote, under arrest at that point. Uh, it might be relevant for purposes of, of knowing whether or not this was excessive force. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also curious what the qualified immunity arguments might be for the, the state officers being sued um, for money damages, presumably. I, I wonder if like there's some kind of argument that the federal aspect of the agent's work preempts state qualified immunity doctrine. Uh, but typically, I would think in like in a normal case, I, I would think that qualified immunity would protect these officers from any kind of civil lawsuit uh, for damages from a from a private citizen. Assuming um, there was no wrongdoing on their behalf, right? Right. So uh, this this I think would be in like the realm of ambiguity or whatever i don't know what the actual substantive standard is but it's quite generous for for law enforcement so Mm -hmm. i would i would presume that that this situation do um, you what did we stand on this so (laughs) i think this might be like the most unpopular thing i i think qualified immunity is a good thing at least in theory absolutely do you disagree with it i think to some extent you it's important because i while i I don't take like to the maximal degree Mm -hmm. the notion that uh, we absolutely need the strongest qualified immunity in order. Otherwise, we won't have cops ever. Yeah. I do think that it's important that uh, we not set a totally precedent just, where basically yes. every single interaction with a cop means somebody's going to be getting sued. Like every single time, it seems like. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I really think I, I really think that there is a, a need to have good um, police officers. And if we're just, you know, um, flooding them with litigation and making them not even want to go into dangerous situations or take risks when situations call for risks, mm-hmm. then I think um, we might be in a in a bad state. But I think that there's a, a strong argument to be had that it's it doesn't need to be as strong as it is. Sure. Uh, now I'm not the person to bring that um, that argument because I I'm not very well read on on the limits and meets and bounds of, of qualified immunity. But, but I, I think I would agree with you that there needs to be some some qualified immunity. Just like there should be, by the way absolute immunity in certain cases i can see reasons why there should be absolute immunity for the president in certain things mm-hmm. so should we be able to sue the president um oh this was one of the afghanistan yeah this is one of the i think everybody hated me on this take but it had to do with whether or not we should be able to um like prosecute trump after the white house you might have even disagree with me on this i don't remember where you stood on this or maybe yeah. you were one of those where it, like as much as i, I might have even gotten pushed over oh, to yes six? yeah for anything and mm-hmm. it was just like I, it was I don't know. I think I've probably flip flopped on this back and forth and I probably am going to do it again. But like, I think I barely stand on the side of no, because like the precedent of prosecuting ex presidents by current presidents sounds like what could be possibly the worst precedent to ever set, like in, in, in your judicial anything for your country. Like Let's do easy cases and hard cases. So, so easy so cases Biden, would be like so, like a president, like multiple like serial rape and murders in the Oval Office and then gets impeached or whatever. Like, w- should they be thrown in jail at that point? Probably. But it seems well, like let's separate okay. two things. Let's separate two, two things. So one is, should the president be immune from criminal prosecution while sitting in office? That's one. And, and by the way, mm-hmm. current uh, Office of Legal Counsel opinion which um, Robert Mueller followed was that Mm -hmm. a president while sitting in office, not the vice president, but the president Mm -hmm. is immune from criminal. uh, This is just the office of legal counsel. So it's not like binding Supreme court president. Mm -hmm. It says they can't be criminally prosecuted. That Mm -hmm. is a separate question. I think, and another interesting one than the absolute immunity argument for civil liability. So let me give you the, what I think is the easy case for absolute immunity um, in some, in civil context. So Joe Biden decides to get out of Afghanistan and, there's an I think a strong argument to be made that in certain respects the pullout was was not the most effective it could have, it yeah, could sure. have been. And let's say that someone there was some negligence on the part of Joe Biden's conduct or there was some mm-hmm. wrongful death that occurred as a result of that conduct. Should Joe Biden for pulling out of Afghanistan be liable in civil court for damages caused by his pulling out uh, irresponsibly or negligently? Mm-hmm. And I think that, that um that's a case where like of course not. The, the president needs to be able to set policy, and if that causes damages, mm-hmm. in, in many cases, that's, that's just too bad. Um, a harder case would be like you. What if, real quick to qualify you know, that, the the exact way to state this is: you never, ever, 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 ever want a president of the United <sighs> States trying to decide if they should or shouldn't do some action based on like whether or not they're going to yes. be prosecuted for yeah. it criminally. 
that's oh, that's uh, like civ the mm. civilly. or or civilly or civilly yeah or civilly yes. yeah sorry yeah um, like now, they should ideally be acting in the best interest of yeah. the United States ideally right this is why you don't have presidents from other countries for instance right if we ever have a conflict with the country the president is born in a foreign country you yes. don't want the president having to make a tough decision on behalf of Americans for like his home country that's like the idea that's at it. least the logic of that yeah, yeah. yeah and I I would say one way that you might think that a limitation on that is well only the president when he's acting as the president but not the president when he's occupying role as citizen sure but that that line is super blurry like what does the president do that's not in furtherance of his office all the time you could argue that trump's attacks twitter attacks on people while he's in office is part Serving of his role as, yeah. policy as president mm -hmm. um so it's hard it, the absolute encompassing nature of the of the presidency i think is like a very unique thing in american politics which it's hard for me to like put a limit on what that means yeah there is supreme court precedent saying that a president can be civilly um, sort of uh, challenged and sued for things not occurring while in office. That's the Clinton Clinton case mm -hmm. where there was stuff predating his presidency where he could be sued while in office. That's one set of things, which um, I don't know. Do, do you agree that for the most part, the president should be immune from civil liability for actions taken while in office? Well, well under the – yeah, I do, but do we? I because, like, let's say, for instance, like, we talk about, like, the president obviously shouldn't be able to, like, or, well, I guess when we talk about, like, murdering people, we're talking about, like, criminal charges and civil charges, right? Or Yes. So, so first civil, and, and I do want to get into criminal with you, if that's all right. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think you have to be immune. It seems like it. What's, the, like, the most extreme type of, like, civil case you could think of? So I can think of, like, let's say the president of the United States um, makes a contract while in office, because the president could make a contract, right? Yep. Let's say that Trump signs a deal that's... Um, to, to like, if someone gives him a billion dollars mm -hmm. and in exchange he gives him the whole business, and then he he takes um, the billion dollars and just never gives over the business, mm -hmm. should you be able to go? I mean, that is just something that seems totally removed from the presidency. Um, he just essentially stole a billion dollars. Why yeah. can't you sue him for that? It gets weird. I almost think that like these are clear cut almost because if it's a contract, it's pretty obviously not in the. Um... It's, he's not serving Scope his role as a president. Yeah, because what contract is a president signing, right? He signs things as the executive, right? So bills into yeah. law or you know executive orders or whatever. But in terms of signing a, a contract between himself as a person, that's necessarily not like a presidential thing. So that that's I can think that's of. you acknowledging that there is there are some there is some conduct mm -hmm. which can't reasonably be called within the scope of the presidential office for which he should be liable even while in office. Mm -hmm. Some people okay. in chat are saying that breaking that contract would be criminal. No. Okay. Why would it be criminal? I don't because Twitch has said it, but okay, so I got. Why would breaking a contract be? I mean, people break contracts. Yeah, yeah is there a time. law against breaking a contract? Or I don't, I don't understand that. Sure. Um, okay. Cr criminal stuff. Okay, this one's super hard. Um, I think there's a strong argument that I don't want Joe Biden being liable for some crime in Alabama because just one district attorney decides that he's going to bring a case in some district where he's hated. That seems like a ton of power that like one prosecutor, maybe even unelected, could arrest the president of the United States for some random thing. So that's me being uncomfortable with not even just states having that power, but like state prosecutors. Say, I mean, we're not really in the federal world. I'm just envisioning the maximal worst thing state prosecutor potentially unelected being able to just arrest the president of the United States. So here's like a so, weird yeah. question. Are there extradition requirements for state cases? Extradition requirements for state cases. Like let's say for instance, like citizens. a crazy like South Carolina lawyer decides like, okay, we have a, an arrest warrant for Biden. Could Biden just be like, okay, well I'm never going to South Carolina, like get fucked. They, like would there he are, but like other states like extradite him to, <laughs> to South Carolina? There's a, there's a full faith and credit clause of the constitution, which essentially says that courts have to, um, have to respect the, the like official judgments of other of other state courts mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and so, for the most part, I think that states there might be issues mm. here and there. But states, hold on, I'm not going to speak from that. personal experience. Okay, while that might be true that they have to respect judgments from other states, I don't believe I'm almost positive that arrest warrants are absolutely not like reciprocated through every state. Like, if I have a warrant for me in Iowa. If I get arrested in another state, I don't think that they'll ship me off to Iowa for that warrant. If it's for like a traffic, sometimes they do. Maybe, I, I wonder what, if it's for what, certain what, crimes. Maybe if they're like like if they're felonies, maybe. But it, yeah, um, I'm not sure if there's a. It's probably not a matter of like absolute law that 
an absolute practice that every time that you have a warrant somewhere else that you get brought there. But mm-hmm. I know there are cases where people are extradited to other states to face charges in that state. Whether or not it's mandatory, I'm not sure. Um, and I know okay. sort of casually people were like, I, I don't go to Florida or I don't go there because I, I have an outstanding warrant or something. Uh-huh. Um, so as a matter of practicality, oftentimes avoiding the state might be a good idea if you have an outstanding warrant there. And communi- states don't always talk to each other either. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. okay, but but, but the, the more interesting question, I think, is, is the presidential role here. Because the other side of the equation is not that a state um, like has some trumped up charge against a president and just one prosecutor decides that he's liable. The other side of the equation is Trump starts machine gunning everyone in New York City. Mm-hmm. And how could he not be subject to criminal prosecution were he to do something like that if he literally was doing that? Mm-hmm. And that seems to be... A, what the logic of the OLC memo implies. Um, and so I'm curious, is there a line on criminal prosecution? I mean, you drew a line in civil litigation context. Would you, would you draw a line in the in the criminal context? There would have to be a line somewhere, right? I, I mean, there'd have to be, sure. right? Like, I, I'm, I, mean, I'm not, I don't I think, think I would bite the be. bullet and say, like, I mean, if he's got, you know, enough rounds, he should be able to kill as many people as possible. He's the president, right? Well, the question is one of institutional competency, I think, ultimately. Um, there, I see someone in the chat says, well, he'd get impeached. Um, that's not the question we're asking. The question is, should the process, that's avoiding the question. That's mm-hmm. say, of course, we already know that he can be impeached for that stuff and potentially prosecuted after he leaves office. But the question is, should a prosecutor independently and the police have the authority to arrest the sitting president of the United States uh, for suspicion of having committed a crime? Mm-hmm. That's that's the question. Um, and if you say, well, he'll be impeached, that's that's really not answering that question. Yeah. Um, thoughts? One, on what we just talked about, or what do you mean? Yeah, like, do you think that if, if Joe Biden starts shooting people on Fifth Avenue... Well, yeah, I um, said, like, there must be, there has to be some, like, line where it's like, this is too much, yeah. I, I, that's a hard one, though. I guess this... This might be one of those uh, gentlemen's agreements, I guess, that we have, where hopefully the president doesn't do something like this Never because if it gets that. tested, <laughs> it would be like a shit show. Um, I don't know. I feel like with Trump, a lot of those lines got more. Yeah, absolutely, blurred. and in the Senate and everything as well, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, before I leave, two two last things. One is um, before I make you mad. Um, oh boy. <laughs> the lawyer batch. I mean, I did what you asked. Did I tell you I'd give you a badge if you passed your bar? Yeah. I mean, everyone has been talking about it nonstop, and it was said. And you literally repeated it, that you'd give me a flare once once I passed. Okay, I'll, you know what? Whoever makes my flares in chat, okay, make a, cook up a lawyer flare, all right? And then, yeah. Okay, you, okay. I think it's you, Apple is, and eSports Batman will get one, all right? Yeah. All right, number two, and I'm sorry to bring it up. Oh, man. What's your definition of terrorism? Dude, I don't know, dude. I don't have one. You don't have a definition. No. You don't have a definition of terrorism. No, it's a political term. I don't believe there's a cons- consistent, so, coherent definition of terrorism. No. So you, I mean, would you call anything terroristic? Uh, like in common parlance, yeah, but not like as a levy, like for an individual charge or whatever. I don't think so. So you don't you don't think terrorism should have a definition? Uh, if we want, it, well, at this point, no, because everybody uses the word for everything. So now, at this point, in a perfect world, then maybe it could. Maybe I don't know. It, like you the only reason anyone who calls anything terrorist terrorism? do i what you criticize anyone who calls anything terrorism no because people use it as all the time anyway so it's what's the point so you would make no distinction of someone calling a, a bombing attack terrorism um they're just as irrational as someone calling um <clears throat> here so here's someone picking up a preschool terrorism yeah okay so you asked me something you asked me a really good question earlier um when i kept trying to push you on like is this an arrest or a detainment right yeah and what you asked me was, what's the point? Why do you care? Um, which is a good question. So uh, I, I, would, I would like turn this question around and I'd say the same thing. So if you're asking me like, you know, should this be called terrorist, blah, 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 blah. If it's just like, you know, on the news or in social media or whatever, that's one, oh shit, sorry. If it's like in the news or social media or something, like that's one thing. Um, but if we're talking about creating like a special classification of charges or like a special legal doctrine to deal with it, then that's a totally different question. Um, I just, my, my, Thing, the reason why I don't really like the, the word terrorist is because when you start saying things like people that are trying to, you know, achieve a political end through violence or whatever, it's like, it's so, so, so broad. Um, it's so, so, so broad that I, I just, I don't see how almost anything couldn't theoretically fit under that definition. That's my problem. I see. But 
if, if you insist that if you follow the definition or if you had a definition, maybe you could insist in some limiting principle. To... Yeah, maybe. So like here, here's like something that I would ask you, okay? Um, yeah. Could you give me a definition of terrorism that like would include excludes yeah so yeah things. so like it would include somebody going to bomb a building right yep um but it would exclude well, I heard one right i mean it would what? it wouldn't include you bombing a building um in order to get insurance money probably not sure um it, it wouldn't include bombing a building because you're just what if what if you, you bombed what if you bombed the building to get insurance money though because you thought democrats like destroyed your country and you couldn't make money any other way um, that I think is closer. Yeah, I mean, it, it would depend. I think what, what matters is the motivation. Ultimately, is it for a, a political end? Now, there, now. But like that's what I'm saying. Is, the problem is that word "political." Like, what about an incel murder? Yeah. yeah, if an incel kills like five women because he hates women and he thinks that like we need to have like the incel uprising, is that political? Like, the, there, I think those they're definitely hard cases for sure. Um, and there are cases that I think. Um, so, so, for instance, what if there's a mixed motive? What if you both want the insurance money, so there's a, a personal financial remuneration motive mm -hmm. behind it, but there's also this underlying political motive. Mm -hmm. Those are hard cases, yeah. and those really stretch the limits here. But that's true of any category. There are going to be hard cases. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Place. I just there are easy cases where mm -hmm. it's clearly a political motive. For sure. Um, I, I think uh, I, I would actually uh, echo um, AOC here. Um, cause I think she said something surprisingly salient, um, when she was talking about the January 6th stuff and what she said was, um, I'm paraphrasing, but she basically made a tweet. She's like, everybody's calling for like new charges for these people for terrorists, blah, 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 blah. We don't need that. These were criminal things. These were criminal activities that we have charges for. Yeah. You I have totally, conspiracy. You yeah, have that. I, right. So if people do things like that, charge them for it. But like, should there be like a rise? Like, does it rise to a different type of activity if it's quote unquote terrorism? Um, I don't know. What about like people that, what about people that looted during BLM riots? Does that count as political? Because those were, that's, so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, let me address some of that stuff. So, so yeah. one is on the question of whether or not we need a new regime to deal with quote unquote terrorism, either. Mm -hmm by increasing surveillance of, of people and, and trespassing upon civil liberties? I think the answer is no, we don't need that. If uh, um, you also want like an increase in the severity of the offense, um, I wouldn't want that necessarily. These are independent crimes that have, that should be treated, I think, by and large, um, the same as any other of, of this kind of guilty act. Little asterisks here. There are a lot of people who want to put intensifiers for acts done for racist motivations. You're aware of that, right? So hate crime type intensifiers. Uh -huh. or do you agree that that should be a thing or? or I don't or actually I mean, know, that? I'm not sure. Um, I, I think that I could be moved really quickly off of that. I don't know if a murder being a hate crime should necessarily make it worse. That feels really weird to me, the more that I think about it, but I haven't spent a great deal of time dwelling on that subject, so I'd have to think more about it. Well, I, I would say the logic, if you're against terrorism being used as an intensifier for crimes i think uh unless you're you're saying that racism is, is worse than terrorism um and maybe you do think that mm -hmm. um the logic of of keeping as an intensifier mm -hmm. would be the same but I, I don't i don't find that necessary the reason why i care is because i think there's been a lot of downplaying of january 6th and it makes me sick and i think it's quite clear that what was going on here was uh, i'll give you some uh, an easy question so mm -hmm. the people who were literally wait real quick i have a conversation i was supposed ago. to do seven okay. minutes ago um i am gonna be on later tonight but if yeah you can hit me up with one more question i just want to make okay, it one, one more question then you have to go, oh, go for I'm, it. I'm keeping you from lawrence other yes the nazi uh, queen okay go ahead sorry about that uh have, have fun with that conversation um but i guess my last question is for the people who are literally beating police officers uh capital police officers in january 6th these are people who are explicitly doing violence mm -hmm. and uh explicitly let's say to overturn the results uh, of the presidential election, mm -hmm. that that's on those people. At least for those people, those are that's unquestionably terrorism, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, dude. No, I, no. I just I think that the charge should be for attacking people. Um, I'm, not, I'm not asking about the charge. I'm asking what? As a political label. I, mean, I, I just like what if it's like. What if it's terrorism that we agree with? I'm giving you easy cases. You're I, saying I'm these sure. are easy, but like, what if it's terrorism that we agree with? Should that be like? 
retroactively made okay. So for instance, a lot of the civil rights stuff that got violent was, was absolutely terrorism. But like retroactively, we, you know, 1964, we get the civil rights act and everything like, okay, like, well, fuck, they were in the right. So like, how, how does that- What's like, the examples of terrorism from the civil rights mo movement? Um, th when there, there were violent protests that happened under different groups, there were people, you, the Black Panthers were a bit more extreme back then. Um, I know that um, at different times in his life, Malcolm X was a little bit more on board with like violent- Malcolm. Uh, with, Malcolm X was was on board with like violent means for uh, protests and stuff. Um, I, I I would have to go back and find a specific example. Are you telling me that you don't think there was ever like a violent uh, riot no, or protest I, for? I, I think there there, there possibly was, and yeah. but I think that that's that's totally that's totally fits the definition. Then I mean, yeah, but that's uh, I'm just uncomfortable because it's like it's so political and like it. It's political, which is the same reason why. You would, yeah, I don't know. I just that's so funny. You have to go to the conversation, but yeah. like, thanks for having me on. And if you're available later, maybe we'll. Talk. Yeah, if you want to talk about this later, absolutely sure. It's just yeah, cool. that's just it's a really difficult. That's a difficult one. Yeah, but okay, cool. We'll talk later. Okay, I love you, buddy. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. -bye.